Are you frustrated by not knowing how to light your scene? I'm Max from Amaran, and I'm gonna go through five foundational lighting angles that can set you on the right track and instantly enhance the mood and look of your shot. As filmmakers and content creators, when we're determining the look of our films and videos, we should be thinking about the feeling that we want the audience to experience when they're viewing our work. That's mood. It is the cornerstone of a project's visual design. There are so many variables that can impact the mood of a scene. However, in this case, I'd like to focus on lighting, specifically the placement of our key light. A subtle change in angle can make your content look so many different ways, inviting, friendly, dramatic, and edgy, these examples will serve you as a perfect visual guide on how to set up your shot for the vibe that you want. Pay close attention to what the shadows tell you about the character. Today we're living in this black void room. The walls are painted black so they can absorb any excess light that could be bounced or refracted off the floors or the wall. The reason behind that is so we can see exactly what this one light is doing to our subject. So I'll strike this and I'll show you what I mean. Today we have Adley with us, she's going to be our model and our canvas. Let's picture an imaginary circle around our subject. Each eighth of the circle is going to represent a dramatically different look and mood. Let's take it one step at a time to really showcase the difference it can make to our subject. Let's start with a totally frontal light. In this instance, our light is directly behind our camera, about three feet up, pointed 45 degrees down. We're pointing it 45 degrees down to make sure the eyes are evenly lit. I want you to take note of the minimal shadows. Frontal lighting makes for a balanced image. There's little to no dimension or contrast on the face and usually the background. It's commonly used for beauty lighting to show the symmetry of the face and produce a flattering chin shadow. It produces a high key look, which is popular in comedies because it feels inviting and gives the actors flexibility in blocking and improv. Now, the next method is one of the most famous in films and TV. Now let's move our light away from the camera. At about 45 degrees, this is called Rembrandt lighting. The light is hitting our subject at a slight angle. Notice that small triangle taking shape underneath her eye. This setup is regularly defined as Rembrandt lighting because it stems from the famed 15th century Dutch painter who established this look in his portrait paintings. Arguably, this is one of the most recognizable forms of lighting in filmmaking. Look out for it whenever you're watching a film or video and you'll begin to notice its popularity. This style increases contrast, so there's a huge difference from the bright side of our face to the dark side. This value is referred to as a contrast ratio. We measure this from the amount of stops of light that differ from the bright to the dark side. So 2 to 1 for an even high key look, or 16 to 1 for an almost dark fill side that's super dramatic. Rembrandt lighting presents a more serious mood, but it's very versatile. There's a sense of drama inherently present as well. You've probably seen this next example in a lot of horror content. Let's go 90 degrees from the camera. Notice how the light is split down the middle of her face. Now our contrast ratio is much more drastic. Her dark side is almost completely black. This technique often spells out an intense conflict in a character. This setup also conveys a sense of mystery and unease, which is why it's so popular amongst horror filmmakers. Generally, this look is less flattering because it produces a harsh nose and chin shadow. So consider it if this fits well within your story. Stepping behind our subject, we're just about halfway through the imaginary circle now. The light isn't directly behind our talent, we're just behind her shoulder. Look at how this style of lighting casts a defined edge around the side of her head and shoulders. There's still some information we can pull from her face, but she is nearly silhouetted. This is what we call an edge or a kick light. You would usually want to use this setup as a means to hide your character from the audience. An edge or kick light can pair very well with a frontal key or even a Rembrandt key to really separate your subject from the background. Let's take our light and put it directly behind our subject. This is a backlight, which completely silhouettes our character. This is an interesting placement because we don't see any sort of information on what is usually associated as the most important part of a subject, the face yet it completely draws our attention. There's a clear separation between the shadows and the highlights. This technique is often used when a character is entering a new and unfamiliar place, and it gives the audience the same feeling of uncertainty. On the contrary, this method can also be used to reveal a hero or a protagonist in a story. 
Up to this point, we'd been lighting our town from the right side, aka the back side. To complete the circle, we'd place our light front side of camera, which would mirror similar looks to what we've already seen before. There's so much that the angle of your key light can do to establish mood, and this circle is only one piece of the puzzle. If the mood calls for it, consider modifying your light placement by using a top light or even underlining. I love to seek inspiration, and you should too, so use references and study similar projects to find the right feeling for your work. If you like these examples, you might want to check out our one-man band filmmaking kit over here. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.